Hello again guys, Research Ed here. Today I'd like to demonstrate what a normal takeoff profile looks like in the CRJ. Now, it goes without saying that today's airliners are made to be flown by at least two people. A luxury that most of us don't have while we're simming, so I hope that in showing you some of the procedures and tricks that we use to help one another uh, during this busy time of flight, you can feel a little less test saturated when um, you're taking this particular airplane to the skies. But, uh, before we take the controls, there are a few things that I would like to point out and discuss. So, if we take a look at our PFD here, we've got our V-Speeds bug, obviously. Um, we always bug 200 knots, um, and then we bug our current runway heading. But, as you can see here as well, too, I've bugged an MDA of 1030. The reason why we do that is, if I could pull up Navigraph here... We're currently on the ground in Myrtle Beach. You, as you can see here, the airport elevation is 25 feet. Well, since we can't um, actually bug 25 feet exactly, we are going to round up to the next 10 and then add 1,000 feet. The reason why we bug 1,000 feet above field elevation is because that is our flap retraction altitude. During our normal takeoff profile, what we're actually going to do is we'll depart. We'll climb out at V2 plus 10 to 15 knots up to 1,000 feet. Once we get to 1,000 feet, we're going to accelerate to 200 knots until 3,000 feet. Then after 3,000 feet, we'll accelerate to 250 knots up until 10,000 feet. Um, if we actually lose our, an engine, what we're going to do is we are going to climb out up until 1,000 feet. We'll clean the aircraft up, and then we'll accelerate and um, continue our climb out and deal with the, um, with the problem afterwards. So... We bug that as a reference just so we know where a thousand feet is um, basically at every airport. One of the other things I'd like to really talk about here is the uh, our throttle quadrant. Um, prior to taking off, obviously, we want to make sure that we push our toga switches. That's going to give us our toto um, uh, indication on the FMA, as well as our flight director pitch bars. And lastly, it's actually going to um, update our position here in the FMS but after doing that we want to make sure let's see if I can do this here in the real world in order to stabilize our engines um, I like to aim for it just a little bit past that nut so what we're doing for is aiming for an N1 setting just above 70% the exact number doesn't matter but after 70% that's when the uh, fade egg will start to um, advance the uh, thrust uniformly so we just want to make sure that the uh, N1 is just above 70% before we um, actually push them into the Atoga D10. The last but not least is something that I don't think really gets talked about at all um, when we're talking about this aircraft right here is this synchronize button. It's on the right side for the first officer and it's on the left side for the captain. What that little guy does is it will synchronize your current pitch to the flight director. So the way this works is whenever you're flying the aircraft, it's up to the pilot uh, monitoring to manipulate the controls you're on the MCP. So you can imagine, you know, when you're about a thousand feet and you're asking for 200 knots and to bring the flaps up and to run the after takeoff checklist and to do this, they're trying to do that while they're talking to ATC and they're trying to uh, to change frequencies so it's it's a pretty um, heavy workload time for them so one of the ways you can kind of alleviate that is you can um, synchronize the pitch and it will change your um, not only will it change the speed bug on here but it will change the pitch setting on here as well too so you're kind of keeping control of the information you're getting uh, for yourself here um, and I'll show you how that works on this departure. Um, so, with all that being said, let's take a look at the profile really quick. So, it's a 10 step process that really only changes depending on your flap setting. Um, initially, you want to set our thrust to the Toga detent by 60 knots. At 80 knots, we'll uh, make that call out and verify that both airspeed indicators are reading 80 knots. Prior, 5 knots prior to V1 we're actually going to call V1 um, and that's because before we actually get to V1 we might be able to um, 
stop the aircraft if we need to. So we actually call V1 five knots prior to uh, we act the actual V1 speed. At VR, we will obviously rotate at three degrees per second. Once we've got a positive rate, positive rate, we'll call for gear up and speed mode. And then we'll pitch for V2 plus 10 to 15 knots. Once we're above 400 feet AGL, we'll call for a lateral mode, so either heading mode or nav mode. And then at 600 feet AGL, we can turn the autopilot on. Once we get to the uh, FRA, so 1,000 feet above fuel elevation, we'll climb to 200 knots. So the pilot monitoring in this case will switch the... Um, We'll reset our speed bug to 200 knots. And then, depending on your flap setting, today we're going to use flaps 20. At VT plus 12 knots, we'll call for flaps 8. And then at VT minus 10, we'll call for flaps up, set our thruster to climb detent, and run the after takeoff checklist. And then at 3,000 feet AGL, we are going to accelerate to 250 knots. All right, I think we've talked about this long enough. So, the only thing I'm going to do different here is not turn the autopilot on, but beyond that, we'll just follow the profile as is. Alright. Now, in, in real life, the speeds, the N1, it accelerates a little bit quicker than this, but again, Aerosoft. Alright. Toto. Here we go. Set thrust. Is set. 80 knots. V1, rotate. And pause rate, gear up, speed mode, gear up and climb. We'll pitch right up to the uh, pitch bars here. And there's 400 feet. Heading mode. And 600, we could turn the autopod on, but I'm not going to do that. And 1,000 feet, we'll go ahead and accelerate, climb, ask for climb 200. And we'll bring the flaps up to 8. One alpha echo leaving my airspace frequency change approved. And there's VT minus 10, we'll bring the flaps up and after takeoff check. Climb thrust to detent or climb thrust down to the good lord the throttle quadrant to the climb thrust detent. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> All right, and there's three thousand feet. Now I'll pitch down to seven point five degrees here. For example, I'll synchronize right here at 220 knots, or 221. Look, it brings our pitch bars right down back there. And if I were to maintain the pitch up, that's going to, um, that's going to, should give me 221 knots there, but it looks like it's a little bit faster for some reason. But we'll see. I'll maintain this pitch for now, and we'll try and synchronize it right at 250 knots. down a smidge and here is two five zero got it and look we changed the speeds and our we got our information um, that we wanted on our flight director without ever touching the um, the autopilot which I will turn on now and it's gonna yank the aircraft up because aerosoft but uh, after that yeah we run the after takeoff checklist so Fuel, uh, fuel cross flow can be turned back to auto. Press the versus off and we'll unbox our cast items. And that's it, guys. So, as you can see, the process itself is pretty busy, just like most departures, but there are some tools that you can use to kind of help yourself. Just ease your workload a little bit there. So, I hope you guys learned a little bit of something, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.